The first computer was dreamed up by Charles Babbage in the 1830s. It was called the analytical engine and was to be a giant steam powered machine that took up an entire room. The analytical engine was never finished, but it did have all the theory necessary to work. It would have been programmed with punch cards inspired by the Jacquard loom to compute any manipulation of numbers. Alongside the designs for the first ever computer were the details of the first ever computer program. It was a set of instructions that could be run on the analytical engine to compute a sequence of numbers called the Bernoulli numbers. And this first ever computer program was written up by Ada Lovelace, who had been working with Charles Babbage. Ada was an interesting character in the history of computing. She was the first to clearly communicate the ideas of a computer program and also made several insightful notes about what computers might one day be able to do. She described her hope that one day these machines might be able to do more than just calculate numbers and she thought that maybe they might one day be able to be used to compose music amongst other things. The Bernoulli numbers program was written up by Ada, but it was mostly Babbage's original work. His notes do indicate that Ada spotted a grave mistake in his process, which would really make Ada the world's first debugger. This fact, combined with her detailed notes and explanation of the program, indicates that Ada did have a deep understanding of the underlying mathematics she was writing about. This is a surprising fact because the algebra involved here is that of university level mathematics, but at this time in 1843, there was no such education available to women. So how did Ada Lovelace learn maths and how much did she know? Come with me up this trail in the beautiful Mount Cook National Park in New Zealand to answer these questions about trailblazer Ada Lovelace. Ada was interested in science and mathematics at a young age, and her mother encouraged these interests. Ada was privately educated by a number of tutors, one of which was scientist and writer Mary Somerville, who introduced Ada at age 18 to Charles Babbage. In the years after this meeting, Ada went on to get married and have three children, before returning to her mathematics interest with the help of a new tutor, Augustus de Morgan. He taught her advanced calculus, mostly through letters sent back and forth between the pair. He also assigned readings for Ada, including some of his own published textbooks. Researchers Christopher Hollings, Ursula Martin and Adrian Rice have published a couple of excellent papers about Ada's maths education, including analysing 63 letters sent between Ada and Augustus over a period of 18 months from 1840 to 1842. Ada would have been around age 25 when this correspondence started. Let's take a look at one of those letters. It's November 1840 and Ada starts off by saying that the last fortnight has been spent in total idleness mathematically. She hadn't made any progress because she'd had company but was now set to get back to work. Her homework had been to work through a part of Augustus's book called Elements of Algebra. The section was about logarithms. Her letter details some of her points of confusion. She points out what she believes to be a mistake in the textbook and from looking at the page I agree. In her letters she frequently frequently points out mistakes in the book, but often these turn out to be something missing from her understanding. In this case though, the book claims that this is the limit of this for a large value of n, which doesn't seem right, so I think Ada is correct in saying there's been a misprint. This line in the book gave her a lot of trouble. She says she cannot deduce from this equation that b is equal to 1 over 2x plus 1. So let's have a go at her homework task. We want to rearrange this to solve for b. Ada was unable to do it, but we can multiply both sides by one minus b and by x. Then we can expand the brackets, collect like terms, rearrange to get all the b's on one side, factor out the b, and divide by two x plus one to get b on its own. This is a little tricky and you can easily get lost in the weeds. Ada has had several years away from studying and is juggling raising a family, so it's not surprising she may have stumbled on this. 
Augustus, in his reply, pointed out that there were significant gaps in her knowledge, namely the skill of rearranging algebraic expressions. Ada was keen to rush into calculus, but Augustus said she would need to patch these knowledge gaps first. He said, you understand, of course, that your differential calculus must be delayed from time to time while you make up those points of algebra and trigonometry which you have left behind. I'm more impressed that this was the thing that Ada stumbled on. I had a little read of the content before and after this minor trouble point, and it's a lot more difficult. This is a hardcore algebra book that Ada is working through, and it's full of proofs and difficult things, and she's been able to understand a lot more than I can to have even got to this point. I can also empathise with Ada's desire to want to rush to the good stuff. Sometimes studying math means spending hours on examples that seem minor, inconsequential and not the stuff you signed up for. And I also get that anxiety of knowing you won't be able to learn all of math, especially when life gets busy. And for Ada, as a woman in the 1800s with a husband and kids, she would have had a lot of obligations. Later in her letter, she writes that she does hope soon I may be able to return to your differential calculus. At the same time, I never more felt the importance of not being in a hurry. I fancy great proficiency in mathematical studies is best attained by time, constantly and continually doing a little. If this is so, surely then the university cramming system must be very prejudicial to real progress in the long run. She did eventually make it to calculus and was soon enough working through another of Augustus's books called The Differential and Integral Calculus. In there were all sorts of tricky calculus problems, including many hard integrals. One of Ada's homework problems was to see that this integral is true. It's the integral of 1 over x squared minus c for a positive value of c. I'm going to sit down on this rock and try to do the integral for myself. I'm very out of practice with integration, but here's what I've managed to figure out. In this form, it's not very easy. We would prefer it if it were just 1 over x minus c, because that has a known integral, which is log x minus c. So we should do what we can to try and get it in that form. One way is to rewrite c as something squared, say a squared. This is so that we could break the denominator up into two pieces, which when multiplied together give the original. Rewriting c as a squared means we can write the denominator as x plus a times x minus a, which is slightly closer to an easy to integrate form if we can separate these further. For that we use something called partial fraction decomposition, which is a fancy name for rewriting this as the sum of two fractions. This is equivalent to some constant capital A over x plus A, plus some other constant B over x minus A. Do some rearranging and set x equals to minus A to solve for capital A, then set x is equal to a to solve for b, and we have our fully rewritten form. This is helpful because something hard to integrate has now been rewritten as the sum of two easy to integrate terms. Doing the integral plus some massaging and turning the a squared back into c, we get the line from the textbook. I've written it with the natural log as ln, and with absolute value signs, meaning this quantity is always positive. Augustus D. Morgan in his book uses LOG for the natural logarithm, but hasn't included absolute value signs. Instead, he writes a comment saying, the first form becomes impossible when x is greater than the square root of c, for in that case, the integral becomes the logarithm of a negative quantity. This confused Ada. She wrote that, there are surely certain cases in which negative quantities may be powers and therefore may have logarithms. Well, taking the logarithm of a negative number is not possible in the real world, but it is possible in the imaginary world. However, in the 1800s, when Augustus de Morgan wrote this textbook, the word impossible was used to mean imaginary. The real numbers were called the possible numbers, and we can take the logarithm of a negative number, but the result will be a complex number with an imaginary component. Ada has misinterpreted impossible to mean literally impossible, and she wrote, I fancy I had a little misunderstood the mathematical meaning of the words impossible quantity. I have loosely interpreted it as being equivalent to an absurdity. 
This letter was sent 15th of August 1841 and was actually seven pages long, mentioning many questions she had about her assigned reading. She asked several questions about proofs of different integrals and theorems, and she says, I have worked most earnestly and incessantly at the application of the differential and integral calculus to the subject of accelerating force and accelerated motion during the last two or three weeks. It has interested me beyond everything. She got so excited that she jumped forwards in the reading and said, you will perhaps not approve my having thus run a little riot and anticipate it, but I think it has done me great good. She was working at such a quick pace that she actually sent another letter the very next day, August 16th, with even more questions. In the second to last surviving letter we have from Ada to Augustus, dated November 1841, we can see that Ada has encountered the Bernoulli numbers. Her letter mentions she has read an article of De Morgan's called Operation, which was printed in the book Penny Cyclopedia. The article mentions Bernoulli numbers. She says that, on the whole, she understood the article very well, and asks a few clarifying questions about it. She mentions the Bernoulli numbers directly in her letter. I'm going to see if I can understand it. The Bernoulli numbers are these strange characters that were first spotted by Jacob Bernoulli, used to find the sums of integer powers. That is, take any integer, maybe start with 1, then do 1 to the power of 1, plus 2 to the power of 1, plus 3 to the power of 1, plus 4 to the power of 1, all the way to n to the power of 1. The total can also be written as a half n squared plus a half n. Finding these general forms of the sums gets tricky fast as the power increases. Here's Bernoulli's original attempt from 1713, working out the first 10 powers. So the last line is how to find 1 to the power of 10, plus 2 to the 10, plus 3 to the 10, plus 4 to the 10, all the way up to n to the power of 10. Bernoulli noticed that in each column, there was a common term that could be factored out, and these became the Bernoulli numbers. Now the general form for any sum of integers raised to any power is a big and complicated mess multiplied by these Bernoulli numbers. This took something that couldn't be done and made it doable. One way to find the Bernoulli numbers is with the generating function, which is the series giving t over e to the t minus 1. The first few terms look like this. These terms in brackets are the first few Bernoulli numbers. In De Morgan's article, the Bernoulli numbers come up when expanding the series 1 over e to the t minus 1, which we notice is the generating function for Bernoulli numbers divided by t. Shortly after the letter where Ada mentions the Bernoulli numbers, her correspondence with Augustus winds to an end. The last scrap of paper from Ada available on the archives is dated a year and a half later, August 1843, and it appears to be Ada applying Le Hopital's rule to the generating function for the Bernoulli numbers. This was around the time that Ada was writing up her famous notes for Charles Babbage. Ada had maintained a friendship with Charles Babbage throughout the years and over a nine month period from 1842 to 1843, she spent time translating an article on Babbage's newest proposed machine, the analytical engine. The article was originally written by Italian Luigi Menebrea based on a talk given by Babbage in Italy. With the article, Ada appended a set of notes that were longer than the article itself. In the past, I have made a video going through these notes in detail. In the notes are where we see plans for the first computer program. It's an algorithm which can calculate the first eight Bernoulli numbers. Having now seen the extent of Ada's mathematical education, this makes a lot more sense. She must have found it so cool to be able to apply the concepts that she'd been learning with Augustus de Morgan to a project that excited her. And the math that she had been learning through letter writing was so theoretical that I wonder if she could ever have predicted that not only would she use it to describe a practical machine, but that it would be learning this maths that would give her a legacy that extended hundreds of years into the future.
My impression after reading her homework is that Ada was smarter than me to be able to understand all these readings and ask intelligent questions. I was lucky enough to be able to learn maths from super visual resources and the computers that Ada dreamed of became a reality and now when we're stuck we can get instant help or feedback instead of having to write it all up in a letter. We now have access to resources like Brilliant which is this video's sponsor. Brilliant is a modern way to learn math, data science and computer science interactively. It's fun and has thousands of lessons, covering basic to advanced topics, with new lessons added every month. You take a quick quiz when you sign up and get matched with content that fits your skill level and interests. Then Brilliant's guided lessons let you explore concepts at your own pace. If you get stuck, there are helpful hints and step-by-step -step solutions to get you back on track. If inspired by Ada you would like to write your own programs, then the new Thinking in Code course gets you designing simple programs to solve real world problems. This is from level 1 of their computer science and programming skill set which moves on to writing programs, algorithms and then to the cutting edge with neural networks and quantum computing. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash tibbies or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant and thank you for watching. A special shout out to today's Patron Cat of the Day, Empress Tater Tot.